And at that point, you know, working full time in retail, you know, was unheard of to get time off, extended time off. But this relationship I created with Ed and Mike, the district manager, they really understood what my dream was, right? It was, you know, to, to pursue fishing professionally. So it was amazing how much leeway they gave me as a full-time employee at Dick's. You know, this was a big moment for me in my life. Um, this, this journey now to get to the top level of professional fishing. And, you know, to be honest, there's only one way to do that. And that is to qualify to get to the top tour, which at the time in my mind, the highest level of competitive fishing was the Bassmaster Top 150 circuit, the predecessor to the elites, right? To get there, there was no easy route. Um, I had to work my way through the opens to get there. You know, back then the opens were called the invitationals, but it was the same basic format. And it was a time when now I had to get out of my comfort zone, right? Up to this point, for the most part, I've been fishing in New Jersey, a couple states that way and a couple states that way. But now I had to start traveling the country. I had to start going to Alabama and Florida and the Carolinas and Georgia and really, you know, start fishing against the best in the nation. Not the best in the Northeast, but the best in the nation. At the same time, you know, we're, we're in 1997 and 98 now. And at the same time, I started competing in these invitationals and opens. I was still fishing the Federation. You know, when I look back on it, I think it was that year, that 97, 98, especially 98, was a year where I matured as an angler. I sort of took um, all the knowledge that I've learned, the strategy, all the mental side, and I combined it with the confidence now, right? You know, I had the stability through dicks. Um, you know, things were really coming together for me personally. I had a college degree. And, and so that time of my life, it all started to come together and I started winning regional events. I won my first Red Man in 97. I won my first major New Jersey Federation event in 98. I qualified for the divisionals. At the same time, I was having limited success in the Opens in 1997. I think I had my first top 10 in an, in an invitational in the fall of 97. So I could feel my fishing coming together but exact same time i also felt a lot of weird stuff happening that i never felt before and that came with traveling nationally and being different you know i i can vividly remember you know being at opens at invitationals and being at meetings and sort of feeling like you know i didn't fit in you know, like uh, almost feeling a little ostracized. And I remember feeling like I have to combat that, you know, like I want to fit in. Like, what do I do to fit in with these guys? Right. You know, you know, when you want something so bad, you're almost willing to do anything to be accepted. You know, the, the look, the way I dressed, you know, I remember saying, ah, I, I can't dress like I do at home. I, I have to wear jeans and fishing jeans and I have to wear a vest and I have to tuck my shirt in. And I remember, you know, trying to act like I saw other pros, you know, cons be conservative, don't show as much emotion. Um, I mean, even to the point where, you know, like I remember like they had these, um, 
like religious meetings and and i'm religious there's nothing against religion but they would have these like christian bass meetings before and after the tournaments and i remember like almost feeling obligated to go to those meetings to fit in you know you got to remember you know my mind at the time was i got to do this this is my dream it's my goal and you know it's just it, it was a strange thing to 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 be trying to fit in in a place where i felt like they were sort of pushing me away you know i remember that feeling of being sort of pushed away all came to a head at the bass eastern invitational uh down on the saint john's river i was having a really good event i think gone into the last day i was sitting in the top 10 i was locking into rodman reservoir uh, the water was low that year basically rodman reservoir all looked like the river i loved river fishing i loved current i was in my happy place i remember gone into that tournament and i caught them pretty good the last day but on the way to lock out i stopped and fished some pilings probably about a mile from the face of the lock and you know it's one of those things where you're just killing time you know and and you're killing time and earlier that day in that creek that i talked about i got into an altercation with a guy by the name of jim bitter Let's bring him on. Let's go. Jim Bitter, our former leader. You can stand right down here. Yeah. All right. Thank you. This is going to be anybody's job. Let's have a nice hand for our leader, Jim Bitter. <laughs> Fruitland Park, Florida. Jim Bitter was a Florida pro, and he was established. And, you know, I wasn't even that close to him, but I remember him being so pissed off that I was near him. He was cursing at me, he was casting his lure near me, and I was catching him and he wasn't. So it, it was, you know, par for the course. You know, that's kind of where I was at in my career at that point, I got it. But when I got back to kill a minute or two near the lock, a mile away from the lock, I flipped around a piling and I set the hook on like an eight, eight and a half pound bass. Dude, when I landed that, I flipped out because I knew that was the kind of fish that would put me in the top five, which meant great points, great money. You know, I needed it. I needed that at that point in my career. I put that big one alive while I called a little one out. And I remember like looking around, I was so excited. I was screaming. I remember looking around and like, I remember the other anglers like, looking at me like I was an alien. Dude, there was like 10 other guys fishing all around me because we were all waiting for that lock to open. The lock opened up, I locked through. Dude, it was the best feeling to go back to weigh in, to weigh in a big bag of fish. And sure enough, I ended up in the top five. Well, like, I don't know, like later that night, I was literally driving home. I get a call from the tournament director and the tournament director at the time his name was Dewey Kendrick. And I remember getting a call from Dewey saying, you've been protested for catching a fish in an off limits area. And I remember being baffled by it. And I, I didn't understand it because I, I was like, what do you mean? I'm like, you know, talk to my, my co-angler that was in the boat, he'll tell you. We were fishing around other people. We weren't in off limits. And I remember him saying, yeah, I did. We interviewed him. We interviewed the other anglers. They all said you were in an off limit area. And I remember just having this feeling of dread, like, oh yeah, I, they're, they're trying to give it to me here. They're trying to, they're trying to give me the shaft. And, you know, I remember basically saying that's it, it, not true. Like what, what can I do? Like, what's my course of action to fight this? And he was basically like, well, the next invitational is on Lake Martin in Alabama. It's not far from our offices in Birmingham. Come down and take a polygraph and, you know, take that polygraph and we'll, we'll, we'll take that information, we'll make a decision. You know, it was one of those things where, look, I'm not against the polygraph. I know where I fished. I know in my heart I was right and I did nothing wrong, but I got to go do it, right? I got to go take this polygraph, whether I believed I was being set up or not, I had to go do it. 
It was right on the front end of the last Invitational of the year, and I had a lot of pressure. I was nervous. I was anxious. Um, if, if they took that day away from me, instead of ending up fifth in that tournament or fourth, I'm going to end up in the 30s or 40s if I lose that day. So I was anxious and nervous. I went and took the polygraph, and, you know, my memory of the polygraph was... Let me, let me think of a politically correct way to say it. Um, a very unofficial looking guy hooking me up to a very unofficial looking polygraph asking very unofficial questions. The guy, I remember being very Southern. I remember him being very overweight. Uh, not that any of that mattered. Um, but after the polygraph was over, I remember sitting in Dewey's office and he came back and said, you know, basically said, you failed the polygraph. Um, we're going to disqualify you from that day of the tournament. And I vividly remember him like saying it like that, like, don't worry, we're not disqualifying the whole event, just that fish and that day, because it, and I thought, what, 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 what? Like, I, it didn't happen like that. And I remember pleading with them, how, how can I fight this? How can I, can I pay for an independent polygrapher? No. Can I, can I do it again? No. There was no recourse. And I remember driving away from that meeting, heading to practice for the last invitational, dejected and sad and frustrated. And even to the point where I questioned whether this is what I wanted to do, you know? Do, do, do I want to keep pushing forward in a sport where they clearly don't want me? Or at least that's how I felt. But something inside of me, I, I don't know, you know, it's kind of always been there. I didn't want to give up, and especially not at that moment. I had this last invitation in front of me, and you know, if I won it, if I won the tournament, maybe I would still end up in the top five in points. And that's what would qualify me to get to the top tour. Maybe. And I, you know, I just didn't want to quit there. I wanted to keep pushing. I wanted to keep grinding. And I remember in practice for that tournament, concentrating more, practicing harder, focusing more than I have ever focused in my entire life. And I ended up in third place in that event. By the way, my good friend Pete Glusick won that tournament and I came in third. And sure enough, when it was all said and done and the dust settled, I stayed in the top five in points and I qualified to fish the top tour. Heard you had a bad day, so it ain't going your way, so yeah, what? never give up, heard my life was a movie, okay. I got people trying to use me, no I will never give up, it's not about where you at, it's about where you headed, and all the things they say about you only hurt if you let it, I gotta put on for the kids cause they getting the message, I'm on my knees thanking God, look at all of my blessings, look at little And these kids need a leader, I'ma show them all how Anybody in my way, then we gon' mow them all down Hey, from the garden state, I got some deep roots Fisherman drip with some new boots I almost didn't make it, that's the real truth They call me the general, I got real juice Pull up in a bass cat, doing donuts When I'm at the classic, the people go nuts Heard you had a bad day It ain't going your way Yeah, never give up I got people trying to use me. No I will never give up. You know, this part of my life, it, it's like it all started coming together. Uh, you know, qualifying uh, for the tour felt so good. Um, and everything just started to click. You know, at that same time, I was still fishing the Federation. 
I was Mr. Bass that year in New Jersey in 1998. I qualified for the divisionals. Through the divisional, I won for my state and it qualified me to fish the nationals on the Red River in May. Shreveport Bossier, the gateway to Northwest Louisiana's sportsman's paradise. Riverboat casinos, nonstop gaming action. Louisiana Downs, a top thoroughbred racetrack. The fast lane to fun, frolic, and fishing. That's right, bass fishing. The big name attractions like Harrah's, Casino Magic, and the Horseshoe Casino grab the tourist attention. But bass anglers are betting on the red, the Red River. I wanna be the best in the game, invest in my name Check no restraints, I'm obsessed with the pain I ingest, I retain, assess and I change Possessed by the thought I'll be free one day From society's restraints, money, clout and fame Mud disease, a plague, we all love to hate Have to play the game, have to make a name All our insecurities are on this display This is war with the enemy Think that it was meant to be Living in a time where disease is on every screen I won't let them fester me I know most are festering Negativity 